Um, hey everybody, we are live and uh, welcome this morning um, to the uh, Praise, Prayers and Promises uh, <laughs> Sunday morning sermon. We got, uh, I have a congregation of two here. I got Abraham and Shanita. Say hi everybody. Happy to be here. Yeah, you said you needed uh, something. Uh, yeah, that's all right. You're good with it? Everything's good. Okay. You know, um, we're on uh, several platforms. We're on, obviously, YouTube, davidhevener.tv. We're on Facebook. Um, and I, I, I want to encourage you guys that are on David Hevener TV, if you're not signed up, uh, would you please sign up? Uh, it would be great. We have uh, over 800 videos. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're original. And I have interviews with some of the top-notch, what I would consider experts of people in the field of um, uh, demonic warfare, you know, astral projection, program multiples, um, things the church doesn't talk about, okay? So consider signing up, going to davidhevener.tv and uh, signing up on that. Uh, if, you're watch if you're not watching, jump over there, okay? And uh, don't forget to sign up for it. All right, what are we talking about this morning? Um, we're gonna be talking about salvation. Salvation? Salvation? What church talks about salvation anymore? Because if you, if you talk about salvation, that means somebody may not be saved. Oh, my goodness. Goodness gracious, a, a, a pastor gets in the pulpit and starts insinuating there might be someone not saved. How offensive that would be. What are we gonna call that? Uh, we've got something for, for uh, you know, politically correct, uh, social uh, justice, uh, what do we call that? Religious rhetoric, uh, you know. I mean, th this is the world we're in, folks. We're not even in a, um, we're not even a, in a world of, of post-Christ dying and, and resurrection. We're not in that world. We're in a world of pre-Christ coming. We're, we're, we're in a world where it's before Christ came into the world you have the pagans. You just got godless people, and this is what we, this is what we're dealing with. Is we're dealing with not godliness. We're dealing with godlessness. And where does it come from? Well, it starts in the pulpit. Not all preachers, but a lot of preachers. They're not speaking the truth. They're godless. Okay, it's godlessness, and that's why God spoke to me and said, David, I want you on Sunday morning even though we understand Sunday comes from a pagan holiday, it doesn't matter. For us, we worship every day of the week. So it's not a matter of worshiping on Sunday. We worship on Saturday, Friday, Thursday. We're just worshiping God here this morning. It's, it's, it's a day that we all get together, okay? But God said, go and, and go to the people. He said, I'm tired of the pussycats in the pulpit. I'm tired of the canaries in the congregation. He said, I want lions in my church. God said, I'm tired of the wimps, of the pussycats in my church. I want lions in my church. And I believe that's what you are. I believe you're a lion. And um, I believe that God this morning is gonna say something and do something to spite me, to spite me getting in the way. I believe God's gonna say something, and do something that's gonna be beneficial to, to, to our knowledge, our knowledge of God. Because I always ask God, Lord, let me leave the, the, the meeting, the congregation, let me leave this gathering on a higher level in which I came in, all right? So before I get started this morning, we got some uh, people in chat saying hi. Yeah, yeah, Lynette is here and she is offering a prayer request. Okay, we'll Lynette, that. We'll, we'll cover that. awesome. We're gonna get your prayer request um, and uh, go ahead and give me Lynette's prayer request right um. now. They're having an open house, one to four central today. So okay. Pray for the house to sell. Okay, the house to sell. Okay, sell house. Mm -hmm. All right, Lynette, you're doing it at a good time because I think we're right at the cusp of the housing collapse. So it's good that you're gonna, uh, if God's will, that you're gonna sell that. So we're gonna be praying that. Uh, but as prayer requests come in, let me know. We're gonna put that down and then we'll pray for you in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what other chat do we have? Anybody? Um, Coming. I'll let you know. So I something pops up. Well, <clears throat> I tell you, I want to know if anybody shows up um, from another country. 
okay, oh. other than the United States. So the first person that shows up is going to win. You're going to win. We'll figure that out. But anyway, I'm so... Michelle is here. She's from Canada. Hey, Michelle. All right. You're the winner. And All right. Angel is here from the UK. All right, Angel. Good to have you both. Guinevere from Florida. Okay. Well, Florida's another country now that Donald Trump moved there. And we got there's a governor that actually will stand up for the... For the truth, um, I would consider Florida another country. Sunshine from Ohio, Opal from Sunshine. Indiana, Opal, and Melinda from Kentucky. And Kevin, you told me where you were from last week, and I forget. I'm sorry. So Sparkmaker Actual is here. All right. Welcome to all well, of you, family. Linda from Canada. Oh, welcome, 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 welcome. It's so good to have you guys, and I'm going to just talk a little bit um, before we get started because there's more people coming in. Think of it, I mean, I'd like to think of this as, I don't want to say God's new church. I want to say it's God's new way, new method of getting the gospel across, okay? And that's what I like to think of this as. So if you can imagine people coming in to the sanctuary, which this is our sanctuary. It's, it's, it's set apart, sanctified, okay? Think of it as maybe someone walking out in the street and they see a sign that says, come in and meet God. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I pray our sign says this morning, come in and meet God. So think of it as that, is, is someone walking down the street and they go, wow, I just stumbled across this channel. And for the first time in their life, they're going to hear the true living God. They're going to hear the character of God. They're not gonna get some mamby-pamby stuff from some uh, you know, skinny leg preacher up there preaching, feel good, have your best life now. They're gonna hear what God really has to say in the true character of God. And so I just wanna tell you guys, I'm so thankful for you being here. It means a lot to me because without you here with your prayers and your support, um, then it would be hard to do this uh, every week. I'd still do it, but the fact you're here is telling me that God's speaking, God's drawing hearts nearer and closer. So, so we're waiting to get started because that one person may be walking down the street that needs to hear about God. Um, it may be that someone stumbled across this channel, this um, gathering, this Sunday morning service, and says, well, I'm going to call somebody and tell them to tune in. Now, if that's you and you want to call somebody, Call them and tell them to go to, was it Last Evangelist, David Hebner on YouTube? Yes, yeah, David Hebner, yep. Hyphen Last Evangelist. Hyphen Last Evangelist. <laughs> or they can go to davidhebner.tv. That's our platform. Uh, it'd be great to have you go there. Um, davidhebner.tv. And, and you can, by the way, this is free, right, on David Hebner yes, TV? Yes. So when you go to David Hebner TV, it's 100% free. It's not going to cost you anything. You can watch it on the front page. If you would like to become a member and subscribe to David Hebner TV and go um, uh, and watch the videos, you can. And even on Monday night at eight o'clock after our seven o'clock show, we go underground. But the only way you can go underground is to become a member, okay? You just sign up for the year. It's just $49 for the year or $5.99 a month. But anyway, you can come with us underground. We ask questions, we raise hands, we laugh, we cry, we sing together. Um, and of course, don't forget the Monday night show starting at 7 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have been, we've been on the show now, Shanita and Abraham, for, for five years now. And some of you guys have been with me from day one, and I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all of you who tune in, because this is how God is moving in these last days. Why? Because God wants God's people to know what's going on so that we can be well equipped to deal with the Antichrist. And this is what we talk about. This is the foundation of what we talk about is how to deal with things in these end times, all right? All right, so I want to uh, welcome everybody. And uh, I don't know if you have your morning coffee. I've got mine here in my uh, last evangelist mug, by the way. Um, and that's the other thing. I was wondering, is it okay to drink coffee and be with Jesus, you know? Uh, I love to have coffee in the morning and sit there and read scripture and prepare the sermons. And I just love the smell and the taste of coffee. And I just, 
you know, I, I don't, don't take this wrong because I, I got to be careful how I say this, but, but it makes me, and it's not the caffeine, it's the smell of the coffee, it's the taste of it that just, I don't know, gives me that warm feeling and I, I feel like, you know, I'm sitting with Jesus and, and we're talking and, and, and I don't mean be, be disrespectful to God, but I mean, I just feel in communication with God early in the morning, sometimes five o'clock in the morning, having a cup of coffee, reading my Bible. I wanna know how you guys feel about that. Or maybe it's a cup of tea, but it's, it's something that you're, uh, I don't know, is there such thing as breaking bread with Jesus? I mean, I don't know anything in the Bible where we can't do that. But this would be have a cup of coffee with Jesus. And uh, that led me to my thing last week. Is there, um, are there I hope that will there be coffee shops in heaven? We talk about the great feast, but what about having a cup of coffee in heaven? I think there will be. I think that there's going to be a lot more than we think. Well, yeah, Ninja Kitty agrees. And Opal says coffee and Jesus every morning. Early every morning. Early every morning. All right, Kitty and Opal. God bless you guys. All right, so let's get started here. All right. Um, once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. Seriously? You know, that statement comes up more often than I would like to hear it. Once saved, always saved. Why is that? Because it seems like that when Christians get saved, they want some type of seal of approval that no matter what they do, no matter what they think, they, I want to say we, we just want that approval that we are saved by golly. Well, he backslid and lives like hell now. And, uh, you know, it, uh, but still, once saved, always saved, right? I want to dissect that this morning. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and guide us and lead us through this. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. I thank you for each and every person here this morning. As we ask the question, once saved, always saved. Lord, we lay this before you so that we can understand it more. We come as humble children wanting to learn. I pray for each and every person here as we go into a place of reverence, the sanctuary. We are sanctified, set apart in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, once saved, always saved. There's too many people trying to discuss once saved, always saved, instead of trying to live like they are saved. Let me say that again. There are too many Christians wanting to debate and ask themselves and you and me, once saved, always saved, instead of working on a life that represents salvation. You see, there's two kinds of salvation the Bible talks about. There's a salvation unto eternity, unto, unto eternal life, and there's salvation on a day-to-day -day basis, hour-to-hour -hour basis, to be saved from the darts of the enemy, to be saved, well, the Bible talks about it. But no matter who you are, whether you are saved into eternal life or saved, or yet to be saved into eternal life, you are facing a form of salvation. Now, I hope I'm talking to two kinds of people. I'm hoping that that person who stepped off the street and came into our meeting this morning, it's the first time you're hearing about God, really, and you're saying to yourself, I don't know that I'm saved. I don't think I'm saved. Or maybe someone's listening who's been to church all their life and saying, well, I'm not sure if I'm saved. So I'm talking to that person. And, but then I'm also talking to the, uh, the people that are saved that are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis, hour to hour, moment to moment, if you're like me, second to second. So I'm talking to everyone. So no one is exempt from this. Salvation, no matter if it's salvation into eternity or salvation on a day-to-day -day basis to be saved from the, from the darts of the enemy, depends on one word. It's called love. Well, David, I love everybody. I feed the homeless. I go to 
nursing homes and I sing, I, you know, I love, I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the kind of love that God talks about. Let's go to 2 John 4, 11. 2 John 4, 11. This burns in my brain because I'm going to tell you a story. I made a movie and I'm an actor and I made a movie. I played a, a, a preacher that preaches in a bar. Okay, I'm a barroom preacher. And, and it wasn't my movie. I just, they hired me as an actor. And I read the script and it was about God, but, it, but they had no clue who God really was. It was just some man upstairs, some... I don't know, the, you know, universal uh, higher power, whatever. No. I had to read this in my, in my script, in the script. And as I'm in the bar room, I'm talking to somebody. I'm reading this, and they took it totally out of context. And I'm gonna re- we're going to read it and see how the world, well, mostly the church, takes it out of context. The world doesn't because they don't care. They don't even know it exists. John, 2 John 4, 11, it has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in truth, just as the Father commanded us. All right, what's he saying? Walking in truth, just like the Father commanded us. And we're gonna talk about what is truth. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command. This is where they start misusing it. I'm not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another. And they end it there. It's not a new command. It's a, it's a command that I've always given you, but it's a command that you love one another and they stop it because they don't want you to know what love really is. Now we mentioned truth earlier and we're gonna go to that, verse five. I'm sorry, verse six. And this is love. So you say, they don't, they don't go any further They don't go into this, what is love? They'll tell you to love one another. They'll tell you that Mother Teresa fed this and did that and prayed over it. Not that Mother Teresa's not saying, I don't want to get into that. But they'll give you every, every example in the world of the things you do that show love or you hug someone, you kiss someone, that's love. But let's talk about God's love, what the scripture's talking about. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you heard from the beginning, his command is that we, you walk in love. So what does this mean? You see? His commands, what is the commands of Jesus Christ? Well, there are many commands, but I wanna give you the first command that was mentioned in verse four. It, let's go back to verse four. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us to do. The number one is that we walk in truth. Well, David, I walk in truth. By golly, I, I, I know Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I go to church. I put money in the offering. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about walking in 100% truth. When it's convenient, when it's not convenient, when you're loved and when you're hated, and mostly you're gonna be hated. Because I told people, if Jesus walked the face of the earth now as a man, as a human being, they would lock him up and throw away the key. Because right now, the modern day apostate church is crucifying Jesus the way that the Jews did 2,000 years ago. And it's really about religion. It's all religion. When I say crucifying, I'm, I'm talking about assassinating the character of God by not telling the truth. And I'll give you two examples. Number one is taking care of our babies. When a preacher gets up on a Sunday morning and fails to tell the congregation, don't forget to pray for our, the slaughtering of our babies. When he fails to do that, I question, where is his heart? Number two is perversion. Yeah, namely sexual perversion. I mean, we've got all kinds of weird stuff going on here, folks. There's even drag queens going into the church, reading children the Bible in Sunday school. It's, it's, it's outrageous. So we walk in truth. That is love. 
Number seven, I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Let me tell you something. That's the modern day church. They will tell you they know Jesus. They will talk of the things that Jesus, but if they don't do Jesus, they are not of Jesus. And that's exactly what the scripture is talking about. They deny Jesus has come in the flesh. They have to deny it. Even though they tell you he does come in the flesh, it is not the truth. They don't believe it. Because if they believe that the Son of God really came in the flesh and died for you and I and Father gave his Son for you and I, they would have compassion for the Father and they would obey his commands. Watch out, verse 8, watch out that, that you do not lose what we have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Watch out, folks. Be careful that we don't lose it. Let's not get sucked in. You know, I'm not worried about you guys out there getting sucked into drugs and alcohol, even though that, that, that happens, and we're going to talk about that. That's not, that's not the height of my concern. You know what the height of my concern is? That someone, we, I, any of us, get sucked into religiosity. And what does that mean? That means to be comfortable. That means to be lukewarm that we are not on fire for God and not willing to do the things God wants us to do. Shanita, do we have any, uh, any other uh, comments, questions, uh, praise reports? Um, I, gotta take, I gotta let the fire cool off a little bit. I'm just, I might, I might I'm combustible at this point, okay. I'm, I don't, I'm not apologizing for getting, you know, uh, and it's not angry, I get, I get passionate. Okay, I get passionate because I, I love God and I, and I love his character. And when people assassinate his character, when I see people just blatantly just doing things that are not of God, and I'm talking about in these churches, they, 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 they say they know our God, but they don't know our God. That, that breaks my heart. And that's why I get passionate when I'm talking about this. Anything, Shanita, anybody? It's kind of like when you're, in bed with Satan and Jezebel. Yeah, when you're in the bed with Satan and Jezebel. That's right. When we don't stand up for God, it's like crawling in bed with Satan. Because you're going to sleep with somebody. The Bible talks about that. You can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. Folks, we're in a day and time God will not tolerate he will not let the sheep and the goats mingle anymore. He's separating them. Now, we've got to decide, are we with the sheep or the goats? You better say sheep. The Bible talks about that. You see, there's, and there's no, there is, I understand that we slip. I slip all the time. I'm not talking about doing everything perfect, no. I'm talking about a mindset to follow Christ. Okay. Let's go to nine. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue the teaching of Christ does not have God. So if you do not, I'm not talking about a preacher reading scripture or saying a, a great sermon. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about telling the truth. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If you continue in the teaching of truth, not in the preaching of a sermon, not in the reading of a scripture, it's the teaching of the truth. Then you know the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, listen to this. If someone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. What in the world? We've got to be careful what we bring in our house, folks. And if you have brought that into your house, it needs to be cleansed. Now, having an atheist come to your house and does not acknowledge God, this does not refer to them. This refers to someone that comes in the name of God 
preaching a false gospel. If you've allowed that in your house, you have a spirit, a demon of religiosity. And in the Bible, and it talks about this, that a demon will leave, he'll come back, he'll find the place clean. In other words, uh, it, it, it prepared for him to move back into. He won't move back into it. He'll bring seven other demons with him. This is the demon of religion. Matter of fact, in scripture, they were talking about, I think it was Jesus was talking about the demon of religion. So if you had religion in your home, that's worse than a Ouija board. I'm gonna say it again. Ooh, Shanita just said something that's pretty hard. Well, Friday you said something even harder. What was it? You'd rather be a prostitute than a spiritual Ooh. prostitute, Ooh. a religious prostitute. Yeah, I did say that, didn't I? I mean, I don't want to be either, but we talked about Friday night. By the way, if you guys want to come to a physical meeting we have here every uh, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come here. If not, you can go to davidhevener.tv. We're exclusively only on that. But I said, I would rather be a prostitute on the street, prostituting myself, than to be a spiritual prostitute, lying about God. Why? Because if I'm a, a prostitute on the street, I still have hope of salvation. But if I'm a spiritual prostitute, there is no hope until I come to the realization that I am lukewarm. So that's what I said about prostitution. What did I say just a minute ago? I said, oh, I shouldn't have said that. The spirit of religion in your home is worse than oh, the Ouija board. It is. The spirit of religion in your home is worse than having a Ouija board. Now, they're both bad and they're both demonic, but this demon of religion, it's, it's the worst kind of demon that exists. Why? Because it's confusing. It will lie to you. And this is why Satan has gotten into the church. So if you've had the spirit of religion in your home, I want you to do immediately after this gathering today, cast everything out, burn it, get rid of it, bury it. And we need to cast those demons out. And I think that's what we're gonna do before the end of the show. We're gonna cast demons out of, out of the homes. Okay, I'm making a note to that. Demons out of homes, okay. Uh, religious, people that have stayed in your home that are religious, you know they don't know God, but you let them into your home. We gotta stop that nonsense. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask somebody, Shanita, before they come and stay with us, Now, I'm not going to ask an atheist this because they don't care. I'm going to ask someone who says they're a Christian, but they're going to come and stay with us. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm going to ask them. You all tell me about that. Tell me what you think of this. Is it too hard, too difficult? Before they come and sleep where we are, I'm going to say, you, you're a Christian. You say you're a Christian, right? They go, yeah. I'm going to say, well, how do I know you're a Christian? Are you a real Christian? If they go, well, what does that mean? Well, then explain it to them. And ask them, say, will you stand on, on God's truths? Will you stand on, even though, are you willing to be hated? Are you, and if they start looking at you like a deer in headlights, Shanita, if that, that happens, I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna get them a, mo a Motel 6 room with Tom Bodette, because the light's always on, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we should, you should let somebody stay in your house who, who proclaims to be a Christian, but it's not. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? I want to know you're all so, but hang on for a second. What would Jesus do? See, this is, Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees. Now they would never want to stay in Jesus's home because number one, Jesus didn't have a home. Uh, he was homeless basically. Um, but would he sleep in their home? We're gonna talk about that, I think, on another gathering. That's an interesting, interesting question, though. All right, but number 11, anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. Oh my goodness, the wicked work. All right, so let's go back to what we were talking about here. Um, once saved, always saved. That's the question, once saved, always saved. My question is, are you a Christian sleepwalker or are you a watch warrior? You see, a sleepwalker doesn't know they're asleep. They're just getting up doing the same thing over and over again. 
And this is where the religious community is. They get up every Sunday morning or whatever day they're worshiping, but it's once a week. They get up to every, they put on their, their Sunday go to meeting clothes. And they go sit in the same, they put the rear end into the same pew they put it into for the past 30 years, and they write that check every, for the same amount, do the same thing. They leave thinking that God loves them a little bit more. But that's spiritual insanity. Folks, listen, it's spiritual insanity wanting God to do something, wanting God to change something, expecting something to change, but yet we do the same thing over and over again. God, I need, I need, I need change. I need help. But, but you're doing the same thing over and over again. God's saying, stop. I'm a moving God. Move with me. So now we're going to talk about my experience with God. See, I was a brain dead Christian for many years. I, I was a music leader. I even preach some sermons every once in a while when the preacher didn't show up. Being a music leader, though, I had to look, listen to all these sermons over the years. And I thought I was just supposed to endure all, most of this nonsense. And most of it was nonsense. They had not a clue what they were talking about, a lot of these preachers. They shouldn't have even been the pulpit. They should have been a janitor, and the janitor should have been the preacher. But I ignored it because I thought this is what I'm supposed to do as a music leader. All I'm supposed to do is music. God, and this is my little box and I'm supposed to ignore everything else even though most of the church teaching was apostate. Until God dealt with me because I had two personalities. I had the Sunday go to meeting David and I had the movie making David Monday through Saturday. Until one night in a bathroom I'll never forget, it was a Friday night. It was about seven o'clock, 7 p.m. I walked into this restroom in my house and I literally, literally, I believe died. I collapsed, I fell to the floor, lost consciousness. And I came back. But when I came back, I came back a different person than when I left. Because God married that Sunday go to meeting David to that Monday through Saturday, movie-making David, he married us together as one. And when he brought me back up, I arose as one. I had what they call, folks, spiritual integrity. You see, before I had no integrity, I was a Christian with no integrity. Why? Because I wasn't integrated. I wasn't one. You see, here's the problem with being one is no matter where you go, you're gonna make somebody mad because you're always carrying God with you. When I go to church, I carried the movies with me, but I did it with the God mindset. When I went to the film industry during the week, I carried God with me. In both places, I got resistance, but the biggest resistance was from church. Don't bring that movie stuff in here. It's from the pits of hell. But yeah, there are movies that are from the pits of hell, but not the movie, not my talent to do it. This has been the problem with most of these pastors. They don't get it. So this was my, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about three things, how you can know if you're saved, okay? Number one is a confrontation. Have you had your confrontation? David, uh, I have confrontations all the time. I'm not talking about little, I'm talking about your major confrontation where you finally had to deal with God and God, had, actually God had to deal with you. Just like me on that bathroom floor. God had to deal with me. I had to deal with my life. And I had to deal with that with God. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. In a way, I couldn't have some preacher there in between counseling me or someone doing deliverance, no. It was between me and God, and it's between you and God. Do not call someone that does deliverance. You need to deal it between you and God. Or don't call some preacher for some counseling. You have to do deal with it. It's between you and God. And then after you do that, you can always call a counselor if you want. Call someone that does deliverance, even though you should be doing deliverance. We all are deliverers. I'm talking about demonic warfare. 
There's only one deliverer, and that's Jesus Christ. But. So confrontation, let's go to Acts 9, 1 through 9. This was Paul's confrontation. This is the first of three. Have you had your confrontation? Here's Paul's. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light came from heaven, flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? This is what happened to me on that bathroom floor. David, David, why are you persecuting me? I said, Lord, what do you mean I'm persecuting you? He said, when you don't tell the truth, you are persecuting me. I said, when you don't tell the truth, you are persecuting me. God and God's people, just like Paul was doing. See, he thought he was telling the truth, but he was religious. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Verse seven, the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days, he was blind, did not eat, drink anything. Folks, when I had my experience and I came up off that floor, I couldn't sleep for two months. Literally could not sleep for two months. I couldn't eat. My wife will tell you this. I dropped about 40 pounds and I, I'm... If I drop 10 pounds, I look like, you know, I'm malnourished. I mean, people actually thought I, I was dying. But I was going through this confrontation. Have you had your confrontation? Has God dealt with you? And I'm talking about the ones that do the same thing over and over again. It's called religiosity, thinking that God loves them. All right, number two, the conversion. Now you see, Paul was blind. In order to be converted, you had to be made blind. Bible talks about this. If you're blind, you can see. If you think you can see, you'll be made blind. You have to be blind. Amazing grace. You have to know that you're blind. You have to understand someone's going to lead you around. That's called the Holy Spirit. Acts 9, 15 through 19. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Whoa. Folks, you're valuable to God. He chose you before the beginning of the world. He chose you before you were born. He has a commission for you. He has a special purpose for you. So when you have your confrontation, somebody's out there is going to come to you. Somebody's been praying for you. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road to Damascus as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. He was blind, but now he, he could see. Folks, I was blind. God took me to the floor, brought me back up with integrity. The scales came off my eyes. Over a period of time, I could see. I could see the truth. And what was the truth? The truth was this. I was to never stand behind a preacher again, listening to nonsense without confronting him without, well, first going to God and seeing, is this the time right? And exactly give me the words. But number two is to tell the truth myself. So there's three things there. Holy Spirit, you get the Holy Spirit, you noticed. Holy Spirit came upon Paul. He could see and he was baptized. I think baptized, baptism is very important. I won't get into the teaching of baptism right now, but I believe it's so important that if you've not been baptized and you've accepted Christ, 
you need to be baptized, but you need to be baptized according to the things of God, according to the ways of God, according to the Holy Spirit by the right. Don't let some demonic entity baptize you. There's too many people running off to these churches and they're letting some demon preacher get a hold of them and dunk them down in water. Don't do that. You better get someone you know, because if I'm not, if you're around this area, I will be happy to baptize you. Or if I come to your area and I preach or I'm talking, I'll be happy to baptize you. And I've done that before. But if I'm not around you and that's not possible, then you can go to someone you trust, someone you trust, you can get, well, in a pool, it's cold right now unless you're out west. But you can I've baptize people in pools, have them baptize you. If you have to, put some clothes on, get in a bathtub, run some water, have them come over, make sure they know the Lord. Don't let anybody put their hands on you that doesn't know Jesus Christ and have them baptize you. Matter of fact, you might wanna baptize them too. You haven't been. Number three, well, first let's talk about the confrontation, the conversion, but number three, the commission. God will give you your commission. Acts 9, 20, 22. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among all those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priest? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus and proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Folks, when you have your conversion and you get your commission, your family and your friends will think you've lost your mind. They will come against you. They will make fun of you. They may even hate you, just like they did Paul. But that's how you know you have a, a, a true uh, conversion and commission that God's given you, all right? So confrontation, the conversion, and the commission. All right. Shanita, do we have anybody that has anything uh, to say, anything in chat? Uh, <laughs> without love, we are bankrupt, says Ninja. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Marissa, sometimes it's hard to believe Jesus really wants to forgive me for free. So I do sometimes question if my lack of faith, and in that sense, does it make me unbelievable? Yeah, you know, um, and who said that? Marissa. Marissa. I'm glad you said that because um, the Holy Spirit has just spoken to me to talk about exactly where I think you are right now, where a lot of us are. You see, <clears throat> there's people out there wondering, David, am I saved? I know I say I'm saved and I've been to church. And maybe you are. But you're struggling, just like all of us are struggling. See, just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're out of the flesh and that you can walk on water and you're perfect. That's not salvation. There's people right now struggling with alcohol, drugs, the addiction of sex, food. There's people out there struggling with an addiction to lying. It's hard to tell the truth. The addiction of unforgiveness. This is not salvation if you're struggling with that. What I'm saying, you must understand, is this is not a salvation issue. This is a journey issue, folks. That the minute we become saved, our name is in the book of life, and it's an eternal salvation. We're gonna still stumble. And I wanna to talk to you out there, if you're, still, if you're dealing with an addiction, I know I've dealt with it. And just because you give your life to the Lord doesn't mean that you don't struggle. Now, some people are, are healed immediately. I've seen it, I've experienced. But there's other addictions, and these are demons, that come after us. 
and they cause us to fall and they want us to stay down. You see, you can't stay down. Think of it as Rocky in a boxing match. He would not go down. They knocked him down, but he got back up. You're a Christian Rocky. You're standing there and you're not going down and staying down. Sure, you'll get knocked down, you get back up. And this is the difference between religion and relationship. Religion will tell you, first of all, that you're okay no matter what, you're saved, you don't need to do anything. Or, or if you are saved and you make a mistake, then you're going to hell. No, it's not true. God loves you. The worst place to be is when you are lukewarm in the middle. There is no emotion. There is no, you have the addiction, but it doesn't bother you. You just continue on in the addiction. But that's my question. If that happens, is that really salvation? And we talked about love. I want you to, I want to sing this song. And um, if you guys... Uh, I want to pull this up on, uh, on the internet. It's uh, Love Lifted Me, if you want to pull it up so you've got the words to it. You can sing along with me. So you have anybody out there that's, uh, that likes songs that's talking about singing? Love Lifted Me. Do you, guys, um, do you guys know Love Lifted Me? What do we have out there? Anybody in chat um, have anything to say? Pastor Lee says, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. And Victoria and Kenneth says, being sober actually feels like a high. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But I just want to tell you guys that God loves you no matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in. He loves you. His arms are always open. But you have to understand, they're open, and he embraces us. But in order to stay there, love is following the truth. That's God's great command, is the truth. We have to walk in truth in the Spirit. Do you want to answer Judy's question, do you have to be water baptized in order to be saved? No, nah, do you have to be water baptized? I want to do a whole um, teaching on this. Obviously, in order to be saved, you do not, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> because Jesus never said, go get baptized and you'll be saved. We get saved, then we get baptized. Now, do I believe you should be baptized after you're saved? Absolutely, I believe that. But to say, well, let me get baptized, and if I get baptized, the act of baptism, that's salvation, it's not salvation. Salvation, I'm glad you brought this up. What is salvation? Salvation is the truth and the way. Is understand, going before, first of all, we go before God and we say, God, I'm a sinner, I've sinned, and only your son can connect me with you. Only I can be righteous in your eyes according to your son who died for me on the cross, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I commit to following you the best I can and help me, Father. I commit to following you all my life. And we stay with that. That is salvation. There's a song that says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. If this song is about you, God's out there and he's touching your heart and he's saying, I want to lift you up, then I welcome you. As I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea Heard my despairing cry And from the waters lifted me Now save him I Sing it with me Oh, love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help 
Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart I give to Him, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence I live, ever His praises I sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to to Him, to Him I belong. Oh yeah, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Yeah, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. So perhaps you've tuned in for the first time and then you say, David, I don't know the Lord, but I want to know him right now. God's hearing you and God's watching you and God's with you. You say, Father, I'm a sinner. I come to you, Lord, just as I am. And I understand that you sent your son to die for me on the cross. And this is what I stand on, Father. I believe and I'm going to follow you to the best of my ability. Accept me, Lord. Congratulations, my friend. You have eternal salvation. If you'd like to email me at david at davidhebener.com and let me know your experience, I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. Maybe you're saying, David, I've, I've been struggling with alcohol and drug addiction and sex addiction and all kinds of addiction. I'm, I want it broken, David. I, I, I want it broken. I, I, I don't want to play this game anymore of getting up and falling down. Say, Lord, I'm praying, Lord, for each and every person out there, including myself, that struggles with these daily addictions. Some seem small in our eyes and some seem large in our eyes, but they all are the same in yours. I'm asking, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, that they be taken away as we're free and our, we're cleansed. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's your master of the sea. Billows will obey. He's your savior, he wants to be. Be saved, saved today. Sing it with me. Yeah, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. The God's laid on my heart to talk to someone out there that's been abused. Physically, sexually, emotionally, verbally abused. He's saying now's the time for the healing. abused as a child 
maybe abused as an adult, maybe you're being abused now, but right now, God's saying, I want you to come before the throne. Give it to me. I want you to give that hurt to me. I want you to give the unforgiveness to me. Lord, I pray for those out there listening to my voice that have suffered from abuse through the years. I'm thanking you, Lord, for taking away this hurt. It's a miraculous event. As it's lifted off our shoulders, as love lifts it off our shoulders. Perhaps you've done things in your life that you don't want to talk about, that I didn't mention. God knows what they are. And one day you'll face God and so will I and all those things will be right in front of us. But now's the time to give it to God. And it doesn't matter how or what it was or when it was. God says, give it to me just as I am. As we sing this one more time, I want you to give it to the Lord. Just raise your hands to heaven and praise Him. Love lifted me. Oh yeah, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. God's lifting everyone. Love lifted me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. When nothing else would help. When you say, David, it's hopeless. You don't know. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've been through. It's too big for me. It's too much for me. Listen to me, it's not too big for God. He loves you. You may have been going to church all your life and you say, David, I, I've got a dark corner that nobody knows about and I wanna give it up. And right now, God's calling you to give it up. He wants you, he wants all of you. He doesn't want you just on Sunday morning, he wants all of you all the time. God is a jealous God, but God is a loving God and he's a forgiving God. And right now he loves you and right now he wants to forgive you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting us give you the dark corners of our lives. And we give you those corners right now as we clean out the vessel in which you gave us. Lord, you've prepared us to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And we're standing before you now at this altar. Lord, thank you for giving us an altar. As we stand before you, as we kneel before you, as we lie before you, we repent of our sins. We ask forgiveness. And now we have restoration. Now, Father, thank you that we have restoration. Would you lead us into revival? In Jesus' name, amen. Should have brought Kleenex with me, Shanita. You know, I said something on one of my shows about a, a good preacher. He's not really preaching a message unless he's sweating and perspiring. And they did an article on me, Newsweek magazine. You can pull it up on the internet of all the things that, that's important in life, that's what they had to talk about, is my comment about a preacher sweating if he's a real preacher. Well, I got something else to say. I won't say you're not a real preacher, but to me, tears in the pulpit, tears in the congregation, tears on the altar, 
It's okay. God welcomes tears. He, he loves her. It washes out the emotion, washes out the hurt, and brings about a, a certain amount of restoration, I want to say. So I want to know, have you been crying? Did any tears come to your eyes, or is it just me? Uh, forgive me uh, as I wipe my nose, but these are tears. Yes, Shanita. Well, we have a question, I think, from Russia. Does a human go to heaven if they accidentally die from a painkiller overdose? Not because of being a drug addict, but because um, of heavy pain and took painkillers and was set up by the drug dealers. Okay, so the question is, <clears throat> I'm going to answer that question, but I want to ask you guys the question that I just asked. Has anybody out there shed any tears this morning, or is it just me? Um, uh, sometimes I cry when I'm preaching the gospel. Um, I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. Maybe I feel like God's speaking and I'm hearing the truth. Well, I know God is, always tells the truth. Mm -hmm. But but tears of joy. Do you share tears of? Do you shed tears of joy? Have you shed tears this morning? Tears of repentance. Um, tears of restoration. Let me know. I see some of that chat out there. Okay, answer the question um, from Russia. Who was it that asked that question? I don't know. No, no, okay, from Russia. It wanted to know if you die, if a Christian dies taking painkillers, overdosing, are you still going to go to heaven? If you're a true Christian, you really know the Lord, and you die, no matter how you die, you're going to go to heaven. It's a promise, it's a guarantee. God's not a liar. God will not change his mind midstream. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, no, but here's that one thing. No, listen. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Jesus talked about that, but you won't even get as far as Christianity when you're talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But when you're talking about taking a drug or overdosing on something, um, now, it depends on what's behind it. If you're in an addiction that you will not stop and you turn your back on God and you say, God, I turn to this addiction, then we have to talk about, is it salvation unto eternity? Otherwise, if you struggled with it and you say, God, you're in my life, but sometimes I fell and, and you get up, like we talked about, because you're human, and that one time you fell, you took too many, your heart stopped, I believe you're going to heaven. Because God knew what was in your heart. God knew that you had that you were really struggling to follow him. He knew that you were number he was number one in your life, even though you fell. You see, just because we fall, God doesn't condemn us when we fall. Matter of fact, God wants to help us back up. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah, and Ron is asking, what does blaspheme the Holy Spirit mean? Oh, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's a whole teaching, okay? That's we, and I wish we had time to really get into it, but I'll just give, give you a, little, a few little uh, uh, tidbits here. Jesus talked about blasphemy. He, and I'm going to paraphrase. He says, you can come against me all you want. You come against the Holy Spirit, and boy, do you have troubles. The teachings of God came through Jesus. Jesus was the Word. He was the Word. Look at John. In the beginning was the Word. He's the author and the finish of our, of our faith. But it's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, just like Paul, that brings us into that consciousness, into that enlightenment, into that understanding, the Holy Spirit speaking, guiding. When we uh, um, blasphemy that, when we come against that, when we ignore that, there is no salvation. There can be no salvation without the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about a spirit-filled, emotional, you know, event. That's not, I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon Paul. Yes, when you accept Christ, you have access to the Holy Spirit. You are spirit-filled. Now, will we follow the Holy Spirit? So uh, this, I, I think I dug a deep enough hole, Shanita, for me to bury myself right now. But I hope you understand that 
the, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit coming against the Holy Spirit, well, that's not a forgiveness. That's, that's, that there is no, there is no, um, uh, there's, the, Jesus talked about this. There's no foundation of unforgiveness, of forgiveness with blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, you can come against me. And they did, they nailed him to the cross. But you can't nail the Holy Spirit to the cross, right? It's not possible. All right, any other question? Is assisted suicide? Assisted suicide? Well, to be honest with you, in most hospitals across the world, when you put somebody in there on all those gimmicks and all that medicine and you're thinking all that stuff's going to save you, that's assisted suicide, you, especially, you know, during what we just went through. So, but intentional saying, okay, now we're going to get rid of somebody uh, because, you know, we either don't want them around, we don't, you know, or I'm going to get rid of myself because I don't want to be around. That gets into a suicidal, basically, Shanita, that's suicide whether you're in a hospital or you, you, you take your own life. So the question, I think a better question might be, someone that commits suicide, are they gonna go to heaven? Can a Christian who is a real Christian in a fleeting moment of Christian consciousness do something stupid like commit suicide, can that? And then all of a sudden God says, well, I can't let you into heaven. Let me look at that rule book out here. It says, oh yeah, they did suicide. I'm gonna answer that question next week because I'm gonna, my, uh, they said my papa, my grandfather committed suicide. I don't believe he did. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that next week. So I'm gonna talk about the demons of suicide and how de demons fit into this. And, I, and I'm not avoiding the, the question I really want to answer it uh, coming from a certain uh, point of view, and I don't have to, we don't have time to come from that point of view. I want to come at it from a demonic standpoint of the demons of suicide. Okay, so uh, let's have some prayer requests, some praise reports. Let's do praise reports first. We have a praise report. Um, Guinevere says, "I was dating Blake. Or we were he was my boyfriend a couple of years ago, but now since then I have chosen." Both feet in the kingdom over a worldly relationship. So congratulations for making the right choice. Uh, and who was that that said that? Guinevere. Guinevere, congratulations. God bless you. We're praying for you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Yeah, for your testimony. Yep. Reminds me of the girl in front of our table. We were at the conference mm -hmm. uh, uh, with uh, Mike Wendell. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave her life to the Lord right in front of our table. And she... She was living with a guy at the time. She had to go back after she gave her life to the Lord and tell the guy, I can't live with you anymore. And boy, did that wreak havoc. But, um, but that, when that happens, folks, when you get a transformation and a confirmation, God's gonna tell you to do something uh, that's radical, or he's gonna tell you not to do something. Okay, any other praise reports? Um, we have prayer requests. Okay. Um, from JG... From Brandon, from Blake, from Angel, from Lynette. Blake? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I got Lynette. And who was that? Angel? You said? Uh, Angel and EK. Mm -hmm. Okay. Translated. All right. Okay. Any other prayer requests? I'm going to give another 60 seconds uh, for prayer requests to come in. And if we don't get name you, I'm going to name to the Lord everyone that needs prayer, so you're not gonna be left out. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and before we go to um, prayer, I just wanna remind you guys, you can go to davidhevner.tv and you can sign up. Um, we have a show tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And uh, at eight o'clock, you can go underground with us. And if you sign up, it's exclusive, you can go underground. We talk about things we normally don't talk about. Uh, so that's why we go underground. Uh, if you're on Roku and Amazon, uh, welcome. Thanks for being with us. God bless you guys. Any other prayer requests? Um, Marky. Marky. And okay. Rhonda. Okay. And Rebecca. Okay, Rhonda. And Betty. Okay. And Betty. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, did I miss somebody? Kevin. Marky, Rhonda. Uh, oh, Kevin has a praise report. I'm glad I've officially connected with you. Couldn't wait until today. Oh, bless your heart, Kevin. Thank you. God bless you. Um, okay, so that was Marky, and that was um, uh, Betty and Reba. And who was before Reba? Um, Rebecca instead of Reba. Oh, Rebecca. And did you get Victoria and then add Pam's daughter, Leah? Victoria? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Adam's daughter, Leah? Yes. Leah. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. I pray for each and every person out there, every name that was just mentioned. Okay. Father, we're together this morning because, because we, we hunger for you, because we love you, because we want more of you. We want to understand who you are. We want to understand your character. And most of all, we, we want to please you. We want to honor you. And we stand on the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We, we understand without the blood being shed, and your son rising to the cross, to the throne, that we would not be here right now. And so we thank you for that. Father, I'm asking for special prayer right now for our brothers and sisters, Lynette. She needs to sell that house. I'm asking in your time, in your will, the house will be sold. Could be today, we're believing that. For JG, for Brandon, for Angel, for Marky, Rebecca, Betty, Victoria, Adam's daughter, Leah, and anyone else out there whose name we mentioned that I failed to mention right now, and everyone out there that has a prayer request but was not able to get it in or for some reason did not give us that request, I'm praying right now, Lord, that you will honor those requests according to your will. Of course, we pray for the babies, the innocent children that are being taken out. We come against that. We pray for the mothers that you will change their mind. We're believing that. We pray for the children that are caught up in human trafficking, the children that are being abducted, the children that are running away. I'm asking for a special hedge of protection around all of our children right now. I'm asking for a hedge of protection around the single mothers and the single fathers right now, the single parents. Lord, we're asking that you will step into their lives and help deal and heal with the children and encourage the single parent. Father, there's someone out there that accepted you for the first time, maybe more than one. I'm praising you for that, that we have someone else that is now going to have eternal life. I'm thanking you for the brokenness of us all, the ones that have come to the altar this morning that have shed tears and repented and given that dark place, a corner in their life to you. We praise God, praise you God for that. Ask for a healing for each and every person listening to me. Healing of the stomach, healing of the prostate, and a healing of something in the brain. Lord, touch each and every one of us and bring us back to perfection as close as it can be regardless of our age so that we can continue to spread the gospel. And also that a miraculous thing will be shown both to the religious system and to people that don't know you of these miracles, of these healings, great signs and wonders. Right now, I thank you for each and every person out there for their love. In Jesus' name, amen. Your word, Father, says that great signs and wonders will follow those who believe, and we're believing for David's eyes to be 2020 again. Yes. Cataracts to go. Yes. Infection to go, and we give you the honor and the glory, and we'll testify yes. and proclaim your greatness and your power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, pray for our little granddaughter who has the flu and um, yep. strep throat, and for our son who's sick and all sickness. Bind any and all sickness in the name of Jesus. 
demon of sickness, you are gone from this house, from every house in every apartment in every room for everyone listening out there. Demons are gone in the name of Jesus Christ. The demon of religion, you are gone. You will not return in the name of Jesus. All right, I love you guys. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. There I go crying again. Um, okay, so if you would like to support the ministry, um, this is our church, okay? Um, if you would like to support us, we sure could use it. First of all, prayer. Would you please pray for us? You can reach us at admin at David. Heavener.tv. Let us know you're praying for us. We want to pray for you. Would you pray for us? Because without your prayers, we can't go on another day. The struggle is too great, folks. It's getting harder and harder to tell the truth, speak the truth, but we're going to do it. For as long as I'm breathing, I will commit to God to do it, and I know you will too. If you'd like to support the ministry, become a monthly partner. Uh, you can just uh, go to davidheavener.tv forward slash give. Right, Shanita? or you can text the word CHOSEN to 91999, or you can call 844-806-0006. Uh, your gifts are used to be able to bring um, our shows, to, to cost money to do these shows, not this one, because we don't have a, a production team, but Monday night, any of the other things we do, it costs a lot to keep David Heavener TV on the air. Uh, we make these books and we do DVDs as our two new books you can get, End Times Investigation, uh, True Power in These Last Days, How to Use Your True Power, and the story of my life in Hollywood when it comes to demons and mind control and SRA and much more. Plus you can get, hey, Last Evangelist, uh, the DVD's out, uh, episode one. It's got banned videos on it with Michael Lake and uh, Lisa Haven. Uh, you can watch. Um, and then also this... Uh, End Times Investigation DVD. You can get all this and it supports the ministry when you pick these things up. Eight hours of footage on End Times about the Antichrist and, and uh, Illuminati, New World Order, Satanism, demonic uh, influence that's happening today. So I wanna thank you guys. Please don't forget to join us tomorrow, 7 p.m., davidhevener.tv. Please, um, if you can, go to davidhevener.tv, sign up, become a partner. I know many of you have, and I love you guys, and I appreciate you. Okay, Shanita, before we sign off, any last words? A lot more um, amens and thank yous coming in, and for the rest of you, just know that we are praying for you. And Mira, thank you for being here all the way from Kazakhstan. Wow, Kazakhstan. Wow, amazing. All right, thank you. All right, everybody. I love you guys. Don't forget Giving Tuesday, right? When is Giving Tuesday? I think the way it works this year is anytime you go on Facebook and make a matching donation before the end of the year, they will match it. Oh. If you make a donation, then they will match it starting in February. They'll, you make a donation, they'll match it on Facebook? Yeah, up to 100 bucks. Yeah, but or, wh where do you go on Facebook? How do you... Full Power Wisdom. Oh, Full Power... The name of Full Power Wisdom is the name of our account, whatever. Well, that'd be great. Well, that's good. That's, well, that's one good thing Facebook does. Um, all right. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I think I've said everything I need to say. I'll see you next Sunday. Bring somebody. Tell somebody. And I love you all. You're my family. Um, and uh, God bless you. Till next week.